You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get the last word. Welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast in partnership with Last Word on Sports. This is August the 5th, 2017, and with you today is myself, Carl, and the always wonderful Joel. Joel, how's it going? You are recording in your bedroom today, and I don't know what is happening, but you literally just like, as I started the intro, started rooting through a drawer or something, and now you're just pulling no cords. Are you going to be able to finish this show? I just, I realized my laptop's not plugged in. And so you might we've got, that. well, we've got about, it says that we've got about 53 minutes. Okay. Well, luckily for you, there is a pre-recorded interview later. So you will have about 20 minutes while we, uh, while we play that to plug in your computer. Okay. Well, that's good. I was just thinking we just speed rush this and just get it done before the 53 because as much as i'm recording in my room there's also zero chairs in my room so i am on the floor that's we're a fancy fancy establishment here at the fourth line podcast yeah you don't you don't want to know what i've gone through to make make it happen for, <laughs> for um, all for all 53 minutes we get you for today yeah exactly <laughs> I I have boarded up my bedroom door with pillows. Okay. To try and prevent sound cuz there's people in my house right now. Got some some long weekend visitors. It's long weekend yeah. here in Canada. So happy whatever your province decided to call it day. What do you guys call it? Do you know? I think we call it the long weekend. Okay, that's know. that's the official they just they just really mailed it in. It's something long. like that. Yeah, it's like BC Day. It's like it's literally it's fairly male day. It's like I think ours is Heritage Day. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> no, that's... no one likes heritage. Just, well, I... eh. yeah, but yeah, there's something though that happened. I don't know if this happened in your province or if it was like it. It was relevant to most of your province. Did you happen? Have you watched any CFL football this year? I watched some of it, yeah. So, for those who don't know, the CFL is the Canadian Football League. It is our attempt at the NFL. I don't think that's... It's it's our professional league. It doesn't try to be the NFL. Well, that's good, because it fails. It fails <laughs> yes, yes it does. So, it is... It would be... It would be the equivalent, it's like, it's not as good as college football in the States either. So, like, it, like I liken it to high school football. And I know there's disagreements, but lots of Canadians probably hate that I say that. But that's fine, I don't know. I, I, I would say, like, I would, I would definitely disagree with that. Because there are guys who can go from the CFL and be starters with long careers in the NFL. I wouldn't say that that could happen at a high school. It's college I, level. Like, if you're comparing the two of them, college football isn't that good. Like, I know that all of our American listeners are going to disagree with me on that one, but, like, like 90% of those games are blowouts. Like, you watch the first quarter, and you're like, oh, okay, it's done, which is like the Stamps game this week. So it's a lot like college football. Yeah, I... I don't know. Like when you say guys can go from the CFL and have long careers in the NFL, that's like I can name I can name off the top of my head two. That's it. That's the only I can only name two players that have done that. In as far as like long careers, I can name as at starter. least three. Okay, so okay, let's go. Let's let's hear your three. Okay, Doug Flutie. Jeff Garcia, Cameron Wake. Doug Flutie is iffy in the NFL. I don't know if you ever watched him play in the NFL. That's iffy. That's like long. He had a longer career in the CFL than he did in the NFL by far. Okay. Don Charles Inman is currently the Chargers' second wide receiver. He's a former CFLer. Yeah. I don't 
don't know. We're talking like, yeah, but how many injuries needed to take place for that guy to become <laughs> the second starter? Yeah, but like, now there's only one. He's on, so what? He's the third stringer. Awesome. Yeah. We're we're talking about a very like we're like we're talking uh, oh, less it's, than it's, half it's, a percent. It's not huge. Like there's it's not a lot, but it's bigger than the amount of high schoolers who could jump into the NFL. No, I don't know. Have you seen some of that like Texas football? Have you watched Friday Night Lights? Yeah. Those, I've those watched Friday are... Night Lights. I watched uh Last Stand You. Yeah, there's there's some good high school football players. Hey, okay. So maybe not high school, but like but all this to say, did you catch that sixty six zero to one football game? I I did not watch it. Um because no one, nobody wants to watch a 60 to one game, which is impressive. They got a single point, which for even for our American listeners who don't follow CFL, they're like, how in the world did you get a single point in a football game? They did. Welcome to yeah. CFL. Yeah. Like that's just mind boggling. Like I know we talked about, I know in the playoffs, I forget what the, what the conversation was around, but like, what the equivalent to like a blowout? Because there was a blowout somewhere. It was, like I, was that, it, that was nine goal game with the in the Ducks Anaheim series? Ducks or was are it, in Anaheim. Ducks Oilers. Yeah, or was it? I thought it was the Cavs thing. Maybe it was because of the Cavs. I think they had a couple huge blowouts in Probably. their playoffs, and so we talked about like what would it like? I was trying to think like sixty to one. That's like you're scoring like fifteen to nothing. That's like the equivalent. In the NHL, right? I'd say probably like ten, yeah. So because basically, so just 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 for all those, listen, the the team that scored one point punted the ball through the end zone. That's how they got their point. Yeah, like that's so they didn't do. There was no skill involved. So like it it was essentially a shutout, which I just can't get my head around that. And I was like, I would love to see an NHL game get to that point where you're just like. I don't even know what's happening anymore. It's just all the points are being scored. What what I find most amazing about that, 60 points put up by the Stampeders. Their starting quarterback had one goal. That would be like if the Oilers put up a 10 spot and Connor McDavid got an assist. Just one assist for him. Yeah. There's just... So I, I hope that happens and because I think it would be hilarious, but uh, but that's the CFL for you. So that was... That was, I thought that was hilarious. That was all. I don't know. I watched like five minutes of CFL football last night, and then I turned it off because I was like, I don't know why I'm watching this. Yeah, I, I, I well, I, I try to go to at least one game a year. No matter what, it's fun to go to a game. Um, watch it on TV. I, I rarely watch the full ones if I watch any. So, um, there was but, there was what one news thing in the in the NHL this week in the hockey. Yeah, not. And that's why we're talking about CFL. That's, right what, that's why we're There's talking about college high doc, school though. football. Um, Michael Benjamin Fisher has retired from the National Hockey League. Is that really his middle name? No, uh, probably not. I you, can either I, confirm or deny. I feel like Benjamin is a go-to for you when you make up a name. Like I feel like I think you go to that one a lot. Do I? I think so. Cause like it, it's a quality middle name. Uh, Andrew. I, he totally looks like his middle name would be Andrew. <laughs> what? No, not Andrew. I go like, I don't know. I don't know where I'd go with him from the middle name. I don't. Maybe he doesn't have a middle name. Maybe it's just Michael Fisher. <laughs> just like, because there's obviously no other Michael Fishers out there. So they're like, it's fine. We don't need another identifier. What about it's Mike Michael Fisher? Maybe Michael's Mike. his middle name. Mike is his proper first name. Yeah, Mike <laughs> Michael Fisher. Yeah, that, I'd say that's a unique identifier right there. So now that he's retired, does he go? Does he go Mike Underwood? I I think well at this point, come two years from now, he will most likely be known as Carrie Underwood's husband to most people. So yeah, why not? Isn't he already? The majority of people probably know him as Carrie Underwood's husband already. So it's just going to go downhill from here. Yeah. Because more people probably know about her than about the Predators. That is that is a fact, for sure. Um, 
Mike Fisher, 17-year career, only 37 years old. Not not the oldest, but, uh, you know, retired as the captain of a team that led his team to the Stanley Cup final, even though he was hurt. So didn't actually lead them, like, on the ice. But Mike Fisher retiring, which brings us to two questions. One, we talked about it last week, um, the potential Hockey Canada plan for old guys in the Olympics. This makes it just a little bit easier for that to happen. We're one step closer to the Fisher again let Doan line. Um, are you with him re- actually retired? Do you do you see that happening now? Uh, has he? Well, I actually see it less likely because if he's retired, maybe he's just not playing. Or is this like? Is this just kind of like a forced retirement for him? Like, did he get like? Is all he got for like contract offers? Because it's pretty late in the off season now, so like maybe his agent was trying to get him a contract, and all he was getting was PTOs or something like that. I definitely think that you know I would expect it to be a forced retirement for sure. In the in the same way that like every everyone when the Coyotes cut Shane Doan, everyone got all up in arms of, and again it was partially about the way they did it, but. It's not like anyone's clamoring to sign Shane Doan. It's not a thing. So, no, I definitely think it's the fact that no one really goes out and wants to sign 37-year-old, even even as a center. But no one wants to sign a 37-year-old. Yeah, I I wonder if it's also he just kind of like Nashville or nothing. Like Right, that's where his family is, doesn't want to move him. Yeah, he doesn't... He, he doesn't need money. That's that's no. not a problem in his life. Like so, so it was basically coming down to whether he wanted to play or not, and apparently he didn't, because that's because he he could have signed for the minimum and it would have been he would be totally okay. Yeah, he could have signed like definitely a minimum contract or a two way deal or uh I don't know if a 35 because they have like that 35 plus deal in the NHL I don't know if you can sign a two way contract at that age I'm sure you can why not <laughs> yeah um, I I don't know I do you, so here's the big question this is the one that I saw all over the social medias Hall of Fame or not no, you didn't see that all over the social. The question you did see all over the social media is, who is the next Predators captain? That's the question you saw, Joel. So, I actually didn't see that, but I didn't see the didn't. other one. Either. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, what I found it very interesting about the the Predators captaincy debate was, in none of it did I see mentioned really anyone with. P.K. Subban, who is clearly like a key cog to that team. And what was interesting was was two ways. One, the names that were mentioned, we can get to some of those, but the fact that, you know, he wasn't mentioned and is still good, and that shows kind of the depth they have there. But also, I just you you saw in Montreal everyone saying, well, he should be the captain, he should be the captain when uh Pacioretty ended up with it there. Another time through um, I am very okay with that. It's it doesn't need to be a captain. I think captaincy is in general fairly overrated. Yeah, I'm not entirely. I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to what you were saying there because you said none of it, and I was gonna make a joke about one of our provinces, and then you just <laughs> kept talking, <laughs> and I didn't get a chance to make the joke. So. When you when you do a setup like that, can you like let me? Okay, sorry. Let me just, I've, just next time. Next time, I'll so. I'll try to notice my own accidental pun. Don't worry. Well, what I'm assuming you said, because I also I did hear PK Subban uh, as part of that, and what I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb here and just guess what you said is that you think he would be the greatest captain ever in the NHL if he was awarded it. No. Nope. And. I, but she I can disagree. agree. <laughs> okay, we're on the same page then. <laughs> I, uh, I really care. I don't really care who's the captain of this team. Like, I, yeah, I. Who cares? No, nobody cares because right. it should be. I 
don't know. Like, who who would you go with? If you were just, like, in a – like, you got to pick not knowing anything really about the team inside the locker room. I would go with and, Ryan Ellis. That's a solid choice. I like that been choice. With the, been with the team a long time. Quality guy. I'd go Pekka Rene. Those goalie captains work out really well, so. Yeah. Well, just, like – because you're not allowed to have a goalie as a captain. Right. So, so just like whatever goes against Batman, just throws it in the face of Batman. <laughs> just stick it to him. Just be like, no, we're going to do this. I don't care what you say, Batman. And then just go with it. Um, that's a good way to go. I don't know. What about Roman Yossi? The guy's. Yeah, that, he's good. It's got to be a defenseman, right? It because, does have like, to be a defenseman. Because that's what Nashville is all about. They're like, we, we have all the good defensemen in the league, so we're going to name one of them our captains. Although the one thing that I don't like is, like, I hate teams that don't have captains. Because all you ever get then is conversation about who's going to be the next captain and when they're going to be. Like, you know how many times I've heard that with the Leafs since Dion got traded? Who's going to be the captain? Look at the 18 alternate captains we have. One of those should be a captain. We should give them the captaincy. It's like, just no, just pick a guy so we don't have to hear this conversation anymore. And just pick someone that, yeah, like pick like a Ryan Ellis or a Yossi, someone who's good, solid. Nobody really cares. Yeah, it it becomes a non-conversation. I think at this point, with the way that it goes, that's what you want. You don't want it to be a distraction. Just pick a guy who's good. I would be fine with it with Subban, though. Like, oh, it, yeah. It doesn't matter to me. But it doesn't... He, he's got enough... He's got enough going on and, like... Like, with publicity and, like, media and all that kind of stuff. He doesn't need another thing. No, that is... Yeah. No, I don't want to hear the boring... I don't want to hear the boring questions to P.K. Subban about, like, the ones that you asked the captain. Because, like, the captains of the team get, like, asked... The exact same questions every night, and we don't want that with Subban. We want we want better questions asked. Yeah, like so like a, how, how his breast smells, things like that. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to ask the captain that because he's, he's going to be like, "What, what happened out there tonight? We, you looked a little sluggish." And he's going to be like, "Yeah, back to backs on the road, tough game. We'll give a hundred percent next game." Yeah, exactly. Let's not let's 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 choose someone else. Backup goalie. Let's choose him. Ooh, I like that. He's got nothing else to do. Exactly. He's, he, he can sit there with a the clipboard. Yeah. Joel, last week we had the honor of talking to the guys from Section 328 about the Carolina Hurricanes and my potential bandwagonness. Which brings us to this week, at which point we are talking to Mike who is from the Ducks and Pucks blog. They have a podcast over there as well. He sold me, or tried to sell me, on jumping on the Anaheim Ducks bandwagon. This is my only Western Conference team. Pacific Division had to go outside the Central. Don't, mm-hmm. did, didn't want a Central team. So he sold me on the Anaheim Ducks. Do you want to hear what he said while you try to go figure out how to plug in your computer? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. I'll just, I'll just turn it up, turn it up to 12. Well, your and... computer goes to 12. Mine only goes to 11. Oh, yeah, you got the, you got the wrong computer then. That's, that's My... why you do the producing. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, let's just turn it up and then we'll hear, we'll hear what they say. Cue the pixie dust. All right, everyone, we are very excited today to have with us Mike from Ducks and Pucks and the Ducks and Pucks podcast. Mike, welcome to the show. You know what? Thanks for having me on the show, Carl. I appreciate it. As the listeners know, last week we started this endeavor to help me pick my bandwagon team. Final three teams named, and the Anaheim Ducks were named finalists. And so I have you here today to help me decide why the Anaheim Ducks should be my bandwagon team. Obviously, my Colorado Avalanche, incredibly disappointing season last year and, uh, you know, the last few years. Just looking for another team to enjoy watching some hockey with. 
the Ducks. Why should I choose the Anaheim Ducks? Well, there's there's a lot of reasons. There's a geography. There's the team. Uh, the way they've been playing lately. Um, you know, the Ducks, uh, the last five years, they've won the Pacific Division. Uh, they've gone to the Western Conference Final twice. Um, they've been a contender pretty much every season. So uh, if you jump on that bandwagon, you're going to have a team that's going to play well during the regular season. They're going to do well in the Pacific. They're going to make the playoffs. You won't be disappointed uh, as far as the team goes. And uh, as far as uh, the location, you know, the scenery, you can't complain down here. I mean, we've got good beaches. Um, you know, you've got uh, the Ducks power play uh, girls. They're they're pretty. You got them as well. We've got a great PA announcer. Uh, there's all kinds of good things uh, about SoCal and the Ducks. So um, you know, it's really up to you. Whatever you want to choose, you can choose one or two of those things or all of them. But there's a lot of good things, uh, you know, for the Ducks in Anaheim. Well, and you mentioned the Pacific Division. Myself living in Calgary, obviously the Ducks will come here more often than any other team. The contenders, the Canes and the Jackets, both being out east, they'll come, you know, once a year. And if if I'm busy or don't want to, you know, can't make it to that game, I miss out the chance. Whereas the Ducks will come here at least twice, which is a a big perk. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I listened to the last, uh, you know, show you guys were talking about uh, Carolina. You were talking a little bit about Columbus, too. Uh, You know, uh, if you go with the Ducks, you won't have to worry about uh, Tortorelli. That won't be an issue. So you can (laughs) root for the Ducks. You got Carlisle in there. Um, you know, obviously in the second term, uh, he's doing well uh, with Anaheim. Uh, the Ducks got, you know, really close to the Stanley Cup final. Honestly, I really think they could have made it this last season. Um, you know, a couple injuries kind of hurt them. I, I know Nashville had some injuries as well. But, you know, with the Ducks, they had some significant injuries with Raquel and Eves out. And then, of course, Gibson. Um, and I, I think if those injuries wouldn't happen, I, I think we'd be talking about the Ducks being in the Stanley Cup final. You know, whether or not they would have beat Pittsburgh, I don't know. But, uh, they were really close last year, and I think they could have made it to the final. Certainly having to roll out Jonathan Bernier in an actual like playoff game that matters, not, yeah. uh, not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the last two were, were painful when he came in, in for you know in relief in game five, and then in game six was just, yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. It was bad. Four goals on 16 shots. You can't really... Uh, I know he was rusty. The people that defend him say, you know, all that. But, I mean, come on. Four goals on 16 shots. You just can't. That's just, you know, that's not acceptable. No, <laughs> that, that's not going to get it done. Uh, well, it's you know, good news is now he's with my avalanche. So, uh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> One mistake after another. All right. Um, the, with the Ducks being so good for so long, they they really haven't had much of a lull ever since, you know, Getzlaff is coming to his own. They've Corey Perry alongside of him. Uh, they've been able to go from the J.S. Shiger era to the new era um, and really bridge that well. The Ducks, you know, maybe for some East folks, people who don't want to stay up until 10 o'clock at night to watch the start of a game, they would be a little unknown. But what would you say is like the sneaky good thing about being an Anaheim Ducks fan? Yeah. I agree with you. I, I think that on the East Coast, people don't see as much of this team. Uh, you know what I mean? With the late night, like you said. But with this team, it's a gritty team. You know, they, they play hard. They're they're not a fast skating team, but they get under the skin of other teams. Um, you know, some of the players, obviously, that people love to hate are Corey Perry, uh, Ryan Kessler, those types of guys. But they get in there. They do what they got to do. And, and that's the thing with this team. And you can't count this team out. You know, you saw that against the, the uh, Oilers in the playoffs. You thought they were done. They score three goals in three minutes, you know, and come back. And, and I mean, that's just this type of team. It's, it's a fun team to watch. Um, you have to watch them the full 60 minutes because even when they're losing late in the game, uh, they have a chance to come back and win. And I think that's something that a lot of the fans like about this team is, is the comeback kids that they've been known. Um, they didn't do it as much this last season, but um, they've done it at key moments. They did it in years past. And I think that's one thing that a lot of people, uh, you know, like you said, East Coast people maybe don't know about this team. Yeah, definitely the, the grit of this team. You know, you mentioned uh, you know, Perry, Kessler, you know, great examples of that. And they, they definitely get under the skin um, and it's it's something that, as a fan of a different team, it's kind of frustrating to watch. Like when you're playing against them, you're like, just just stop. So it would be <laughs> exactly. it would be nice to be able to cheer for that and to be able to uh, 
you know, be on the side for that. And I know obviously like a lot of people, it's the guys that everyone likes to hate, right? Like, uh, you know, obviously on this show, we're not huge Boston Bruins supporters. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think most people outside of Boston will agree it's very easy to cheer against Brad Marchand. And that's, you know, right. there's a lot of, I wouldn't put any of the ducks on that level, but uh, they're getting close, some of those guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw it, you know, with uh, Johansson and Kessler going at it in the Western Conference Final. Uh, almost everybody and their mom pretty much hates Corey Perry. We've seen that. You know, a lot of people, you know, get upset with him, even though last year, you know, he, he kind of had a little bit of a down year as far as, uh, you know, in terms of scoring goals and whatnot. But those two guys have been in it. Um, you know, you've seen uh, uh, Manson mix it up on the defense. You've seen Bowl mix it up as well in fights. I mean, you've seen a lot of that with this team. This team has a lot of grit. Um, they'll drop the gloves, you know, pretty much any night if it's if it's needed. Um, and they're just a fun uh, team to watch. I mean, the Ducks have a good young defense. Um, almost the entire team is coming back this next season from last year. Um, so that's the other uh, good point. They have a good young, um, you know, pool of players that are coming up. You know, Sam Steele. Uh, Max Jones, some of the other players. We've got Montour that's up now with the team and looking to play, you know, full time this season. So it's exciting times in Anaheim because you have a good mix of veterans and young players on this team. Yeah, that is a great thing. And, you know, with I think a lot of people, it came to the forefront with the expansion draft, uh, how deep that defensive core is with, you know, all the guys that you needed to protect there. Yeah, and, and and that was a big you know issue. Obviously, some people were upset because you know Shea Theodore went over to Vegas. Uh, some people weren't as upset with Clayton Stoner leaving, um, but you saw the Ducks lost two defensemen, and the Ducks are still fine. They still have plenty of defensive players. They've got other guys coming up. Uh, I really think part of that was Montour uh, last season. Um, I think a lot of people didn't realize how good he really was, and I think when he came up, he kind of overshadowed Shea Theodore, where a lot of people had put more value into Theodore. And I think that was part of the process that went into the, you know, the whole Vegas expansion draft in, you know, in regards to Anaheim, at least. Yeah, for sure. So for me, I look at this team. Uh, obviously, you know, put them in the top three out of the 29 teams being considered. Um, I have things I like about them. There's things that concern me as well. And so for me, I look at the team. And one, not a big fan of the Randy Carlisle Toronto era. And so there's, gotcha. there's that concern for me. But also the fact that... and. It, you know, it wins games. We, we saw it in the playoffs. But the the shutdown defense that this team plays, you know, great defense. But team structure-wise, they were fantastic, especially in that Oilers series in the playoffs this year. Just shutting them down. They couldn't do a whole lot. They just couldn't get things happening, which isn't the most entertaining brand of hockey to watch. It's great to win. Obviously, you want to win. As a fan of the team, you're fine with it. But as someone looking for, you know, some fun in hockey, maybe not the biggest part so those being said you know those are my concerns what would you say would be the the biggest reason not to cheer for this team what's the worst part about being a Ducks fan uh, you know one of the things that's kind of interesting is when you if you've watched the Ducks in the playoffs the last couple of years the thing that kind of irritates a lot of us in our fan base is the lack of recognition by national media. If you watch when they played the Kings, you watch when they played the Blackhawks, it's like NBC and these other channels. I don't know what it is, but they gush over Los Angeles. They gush over Chicago. So one of the things that I, that I think a lot of us agree on in Anaheim is that we're kind of the underdog, you know, we're more of a small market team and that's fine. You know, these other, these other networks, they want to, you know, give so much credibility to these other bigger name city teams. That's fine. So I think we kind of revel in that. And I think the players do as well. And I think that's one reason to root for them. And I know you talk about, uh, you know, like shut down defense and whatnot, but defense wins championships. And I think, that's what the Ducks are good at. And I honestly think, you know, if they wouldn't have had the issue with Gibson gone those last couple of games, they, they probably would have won and they probably would have gone on to the Stanley Cup final. And I think that's something to look for in this team. You know, you have Cam Fowler that signed that big extension. You have Holzer coming back, uh, Lindholm and Botnan, you know, Montour's coming up. And then, as I mentioned before, Manson. So, I mean, you have a good solid core of, of you know, a really good young talent on the defensive end. So with this team... You can you can expect big hits. You can expect good defensive plays, and we kind of revel in the fact that we're not a you know as big of a national market team, so to speak. Well, and I think that's you know definitely something that we see 
partially because of the, like I mentioned earlier, the East Coast, West Coast differences. Um, a lot of the media are out there, and you know, I don't want to don't want to make it sound East Coast biasy, but um, right. there's obvious, obviously always a little bit of that. Um, so, me myself being in Calgary, uh, right? Obviously, Ryan Getzlaff, former Calgary hitman, uh, well known in the city for many years. He would be kind of my default guy that I would enjoy. He's a fantastic player, works hard, performs year in year out. Is there someone else that I would or should pick as my favorite player on the Ducks? If I was to if I was to go out and get a jersey, who should I put on the back of that jersey? It's funny you mention that, and there's a couple of things I can give you on this one. I, I would go with Patrick Eves. Uh, if you like playoff hockey beards, Patrick Eves, he's going to give you that every single game. Uh, you know, he did great in Dallas last year. He did great when he came over to the Ducks. He signed a new, uh, new three-year deal. He is the player, uh, other than I would say outside the big three, Kessler, Getzloff, and Perry. He's the one to watch this next season in the coming years. That's who I would root for. And if you pick the Ducks and that's the guy you like, I will buy you that jersey with Patrick Eves' number on it. That's how confident I am in watching this guy play the next couple seasons. That's that's confident because I definitely – I look at that and I'm – you know, he had a great year last year in Dallas, his best year. Yes. And I, I think most people would agree that's probably going to be his best season ever, especially like statistics-wise. If you look at the counting stats, goals, et cetera, that's going to be his high most likely. Um, and so it, it comes down to, you know, also Patrick Eves, Calgary guy, another connection there. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. But for a 33-year-old coming off that big year, do you like what kind of performance do you expect from him this year? Well, I mean, you know, in 20 games last year, he had 11 goals with the Ducks. So do, you know, and then he had 21 in Dallas. Do I expect him to drop 40 next year? No, I don't expect him to drop 40. But do I expect him to drop between 20 and 30? I do. Um, you know, if he comes off his injury, uh, you know, he had he had the uh, the heel issue uh, in the playoffs, which that killed the Ducks too, uh, you know, against Nashville. But if he comes off that injury, uh, injury, excuse me, and he's healthy this next season, I would not be surprised to see him put up 25 or more goals because I would expect to see him on the number one power play unit. I expect him to skate alongside of Ryan Getzloff, which they had some good chemistry um, last season. And he's a guy to watch. I, I'm really excited. I know a lot of the fans are excited when, when we got him back because a big issue with the Ducks was who are they going to go out and get in the offseason. They didn't really get a, a big you know name forward, but they kept Patrick Eves, which was another concern you know, with the cap and everything and trying to figure all that um, you know mess out. So that's the guy that I, I look for, and I think he's still going to have a good season next year in Anaheim. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned the power play. 13 power play goals for him last year, uh, far surpassing anything he did in the past. So if he can get that, not the Ducks with the number of, uh, you know, the talent uh, up front. You know, there's the depth that they have, but there's certainly a lot of big guns at the top that they can rely on to put together a quality power play. And that's a, a definite big addition there for them. So... You know, Eve's strong, strong as especially with the bribe. A bribe? Oof. Yeah, yeah, a big bribe. <laughs> <laughs> never never going to not take that into consideration. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, we, we got into um, the the style that they play. You know, they play a, a physical game, a tough game. Yes, yes. Um, and, you know, shut down when they need to. Um, the NHL is really moving towards you know, a lot of teams – are going faster, faster, faster. And the Ducks certainly have guys who do have that speed. Um, do you think that this more physical style is going to hinder the Ducks moving forward? Or do you do you think that they're built to still compete against, you know, we saw the Oilers last year in the playoffs, kind of the anti-Ducks. There's, you know, they've got a couple of guys, the Maroon, Luchas, obviously the, the history there with those guys um, that can play physical, but, a much more speed team than the Ducks. How do you think the Ducks can hold up against these fast teams? You know, I I think the Ducks are fine. I mean, you saw what happened against Edmonton. I mean, obviously it went to seven games, but the Ducks were able to to take them out. So I don't think that's an issue. I think the Ducks have a good mix uh, of speed and grit and, uh, you know, defensive play. Um, I think the key with this team really honestly is them staying healthy. I mean, you had Raquel, Eves, and Gibson all go out 
you know, in the playoffs. And I think that killed this team, you know, and not taking anything away from Nashville. Don't get me wrong. Nashville played a great playoff. Obviously, they came out of nowhere, took out Chicago, you know, and they took out us, obviously. And they came up short, you know, in the Stanley Cup, but not by much. But um, I think that this team this year, I, I really think that they'll either be first or second in the Pacific. And I think they'll go deep in the playoffs again. And and the key is, is they have a good mix of speed and, and you know, uh, shutdown defense. And the key for them in the playoffs is just really going to be healthy. I, I mean, because honestly, I think that's what killed this team last year. And, you know, the Ducks have gotten more depth players on this team. They signed a few more. So I think that's going to help out. You know, they brought in uh, Ryan Miller, you know, as the backup goalie, which had been rumored before for a long time. So if something happens with Gibson, which, you know, he sometimes had injury issues, uh, I think Miller can step in and, and take care of that. So I, I look at this team, I, I think that they're the same as where they were at last year, and I think they're a really strong contender on the Western Conference. Well, and certainly the Oilers showed last year that they can get where they, you know, can perform, can step up and compete with the Ducks. Um, a lot of the rest of that Pacific is not. There's, a, you know, the Kings on a downward trend, the Canucks right. on a downward trend, Coyotes. Correct on an upward trend, but there's a long way to go for them. Exactly. Uh, and then, you know, the, the flames are kind of that, you know, third team in that re, uh, range. And then obviously you have Vegas there as well now. So um, and we, we kind of expect them to be near the bottom of the stands as well. So lots for the ducks to win against in the regular season. Certainly I think the expectation, if it would be a very disappointing year, if they did not make the playoffs, would you say that that, would be an accurate representation. Yeah, absolutely. I think this team will, you know, should make the playoffs. Uh, like we said, they didn't lose too many players in the soft season. Um, it should be in that top, you know, two or three of the Pacific for sure. And that's one thing to look for with this team. This team, you know, year in and year out, they've gone on these crazy tears during the regular season where they've just dominated the play and you know pushed into the playoffs you know towards the end especially i mean they've had you know those ones where they 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 eked it out you know they just barely edged the kings they just barely edged the sharks they've won the the division um so i don't think the issue with this team is if they'll make the playoffs it's really how far will they go in the playoffs next year so and as you know currently on the the capitals bandwagon a team struggling to get past the second round what if you had to put a number on it how far would you say the Ducks go this coming season? As far as the playoffs? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, as far as the playoffs. I, I Honestly, I see this team getting back to the Western Conference Final. I really do. Um, I think this team can at least get that far, if not the Stanley Cup. That's how confident I am about the Ducks. Uh, bringing back all the key players that they have. Uh, like I said, only uh, you know a couple guys that they let go. Not Not anybody really that significant. I think this team makes at least the Western Conference Final. That's that's certainly good to see. Certainly an, an improvement over what I've had to do with the Capitals the last few years. <laughs> um, Mike, thank you very much for coming and helping me sort out what what I should do with my bandwagon. Um, if I should, you know, jump on the Ducks or go with one of the other teams, obviously we mentioned previously. So thanks for coming on. Why don't you let everyone know where they can find the great stuff from Ducks and Pucks? Yeah, uh, everything is... Uh... Pretty much on Twitter, you can go Ducks and Pucks. It's Ducks, the letter N, and then Pucks. Uh, same thing on the website, Ducks and Pucks. You can check it out on you know on there. We're on everything. You know, we have our podcast as well uh, on YouTube. You can find us there. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, all that stuff. We're all on there as well. And I uh, just appreciate being on the show, talking to you about the Ducks, and curious to see who you end up picking. You know, uh, uh, between these three teams in the next you know couple weeks here. You're. Me and you both waiting anxiously to see what I <laughs> what I pick. It it keeps getting harder. I was hoping that like one team would just make a very convincing case, right? And the rest of them would just like flop. Uh, not the case so far. We'll see with the jackets next week how that goes. But uh, certainly by the end of August here, we will. I will decide. Everyone will know. <laughs> but thank you very much for coming on. Everyone, head over to Ducks and Pucks for. Uh, kind of everything Ducks, if you want to know more about the Anaheim Ducks. If you're one of those East Coast folks that is like, I can't stay up till 10 o'clock, <laughs> they'll get you up to speed on everything Anaheim. So thank you very much, Mike. Yeah, thank you very much. And and one last thing, too. If you ever come down here, we have watch parties. You're more than welcome to come. We do them for the, uh, the road games. 
uh, we have anywhere from 50 to over 100 people that show up. So if you ever make it down here, whether you pick us or not, you're always welcome to come down. Uh, it's a good time. I appreciate that. We are back. Joel, is your computer good to go? Uh, yeah, I think. We'll see. Okay. It says it, it's telling me that it's going to be fully charged in two minutes. So I, don't... I think that's a good – you might need a new battery for that computer because your 59 minutes that you said got cut in half. Yeah, so, so – We recorded uh... it for 12, and that 59 became 30, which was not enough. So – We'll we'll maybe get a Kickstarter going for Joel to get a new computer battery. Yeah, I'm just gonna use my iPad. <laughs> All right, that's probably the, smart. Um, thank you again to Mike for coming on and uh, just chatting some ducks. It was a good conversation. But what stood out to me the most, and what I think will will have stood out to most people during that was, uh, he upped the ante. The guys from Carolina said, you know, can hang out, stay at their place potentially if we. Uh, head down there for a game obviously their pre-game tailgates uh mike up the ante one next level by saying if you pick the ducks you get a patrick eves jersey which certainly was it is going to be a non-factor for me still how do you feel about a bribe potentially settling this score um i'm not above bribes So I would be I'd be fine with that. Uh I I would also be fine with you cheering for a team that has Kevin Bieksa. That's <laughs> that would bring me a lot of joy in my life. So I say go for it. Yeah, you say Patrick Eves, Kevin Bieksa, get it done. Yeah, cuz I yeah, I just I think there's a lot of promise with the potential of you cheering for this team. So outside of the, you know, the potential comedic factor, could we call it, of cheering for Pat or uh, Kevin Bieksa, it's definitely noted that he is not the same guy and doesn't play the same role that he did when he was in Vancouver, which is when you know him best from. Well, yeah, because he's like, what, he's like 43 now and... He is, uh, he's 36. Well, he acts like he's 43 in how he plays the game. He's, like, that guy, There, you know, there's some players that just, like, hit a wall when they start aging? Yeah. That guy did. Like, <laughs> that, that guy just fell off a cliff and just his ability to play hockey, which I never really liked him because he just kind of was an annoying player. I'm sure, like, Vancouver Canucks fans love him. Just love the guy. And I don't know why. But it's probably because he was one of those guys that like rubbed the other team the wrong way and was probably a better player. But yeah. now he's just a back end defenseman on a team with, you know, some actual good other players. That's the difference between like and that's what I kind of what I mean. If you look at him with Vancouver versus now, his team is like the defense around him is way better than anything he ever had. He doesn't have Sammy. Sammy Salo is not on that Anaheim defense. Yeah, and BX is probably uh, he's probably the worst defenseman of their top six. Probably he's at least bottom pair. So yeah, yeah. Um, this team this seems still a good team though. Like you're you would be. This is like this is very similar to the Capitals. It is, except they actually can win in the playoffs. Yeah, so that's a bonus. That's kind of what sold me on them, is the simple fact that, like, so if you look at the teams that I have, there's the Hurricanes that are, like, the up-and-coming team, didn't make the playoffs last year, still might not make them this year. There's the Ducks that have won the Pacific Division five years in a row, have made the Stanley Cup Finals, have won the Stanley Cup, something the Washington Capitals could not do. They were able to get past the second round. They lost to the Preds. That's fine. And quite literally, I think there was a strong chance, and Mike made this case, that if John Gibson doesn't get hurt, 
that they would win that series. But with Gibson out and Jonathan Bernier in net, that was not happening. Yeah, and I think this is that's a key part to you making this decision is that what's the point of cheering for a team that doesn't make the playoffs? Because like that's the part of the bandwagon, right? Is because then you need to pick like another like if you're going to cheer for a team in the playoffs, then you have a different playoff band. There's just a lot of picking that I have to go through. Here's 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 the scenario: you, like if you go Hurricanes and then they miss the playoffs, then we're sitting at this time. Next year, just being like, well, Carl just cheered for the Capitals again. Yeah, because that, that's what that's what would happen. You would you would just you you need to make a quick decision, and you just be like, well, I'm just going to go with what I what I'm comfortable with. So, and then quite literally, if you're even if you're a playoff bubble team, certainly the Preds were a bubble team. They were the 16th seed. They made the Stanley Cup Finals. That can happen, but if you're if you just miss the playoffs, you're the 17th best team in the NHL, which is like not solidly in the bottom half of the league, but you're noticeably bottom half. You're you you likely if it wasn't for these skewed like playoff or overtime points and things like that, you would be a sub 500 team. And no one really wants to spend a season cheering for a sub 500 team, especially two of them. Yeah, because I have at least one already. And that's so I I do I need to figure out with the Hurricanes what they're what they're going to be because the Ducks will make the playoffs I think that that's a something I can confidently say, um, and I'm not worried about it. They have a good team. It's pretty much the same team that they had from last year, um, except instead of Jonathan Bernier, they have Ryan Miller, who's old, but Jonathan Bernier is terrible. Yeah, and Ryan Miller could probably, if he's not playing very much, he could come in and win some games if Gibson goes down. Exactly. Yeah. Like, when he's you know, fresh. Like if you need 20, 20, 25 games from Ryan Miller throughout the season, he can give you a solid 15. Yeah. And and you can – yeah. So I, I you like that. You like that. So I, And you get to cheer for Corey Perry and Ryan Getzlaff, which I'm, I'm big fans of. Yeah, I like those guys. I kind of like the idea of being like – on the side of the team that kind of rouse some people up, especially here in Calgary with the flames, not being able to beat the ducks. That's a big factor too. Yeah, so what, the question then becomes here is, so you've, you had two conversations now next week, you have to make a decision. Yeah, it's true. And we all know that you're not going to choose Tortorella. I just, I don't see it. You, you're, you're telling me that you could still choose the Blue Jackets. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. So where's, what's your, do you have a current order? Are you going to give us a current order or are you going to save it all for next week? It's, it's close. Like, oh my goodness. if, if the Hurricanes were better, it would be them. And so it, that's literally what it comes down to for me. It's like, I need to figure out if the hurric- if someone were to tell me the Hurricanes would make the playoffs, they would be my team. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Like, here's what, what percentage do you think it is? Their chance, of, their, their chance of playoffs. 30, 40. That's not good. No, nah, it's not. I don't think I'm not a, like, I don't buy these, these Carolina Hurricanes players. Like, you got you have to worry about Scott Darling, like their best player. You have to be concerned about health because he's, he's been healthy bad. for a few years though. I think like he's a guy that I always assumed was unhealthy because he was for so long, but he's played like three seasons without injury. Yeah, I don't know those guys that because like you deal with. But the thing is, is he always is on the verge of like he has a greater risk of being on the verge of not being healthy. Because of the concussion stuff, as soon as you have big concussion problems, it's you can get into them that much quicker again. That is true. Yeah. So, but you're right. He's played so the last four years. He's played more than seventy games. And then that fifth one was lockout. So that forty-two and forty-eight, also good. So he's. I I think it and yeah. So I don't know. I just. 
scored almost 40 goals last year. This guy is – maybe he should pass the puck a little. <laughs> that, that's your conclusion? Jeff Skinner has scored 40 goals almost. Uh, be less selfish, Jeff. Come on. 20 assists. That's all he's getting. Yeah, but look who he has to play with sometimes. Yeah, well. Maybe, <laughs> look, at, maybe. look at me making the case against the Hurricanes here. Yeah, like I – you just – yeah. Here so here this is this is my case for the I think you should go ducks. I've always thought you should go ducks. But here's here's the case that I'm gonna make because you wanna choose a team that's not replacing the Avalanche, correct? Accurate. Okay. The team that's most likely to actually replace the Avalanche are the Carolina Hurricanes. Because they have a young team, young up and coming team. But if you choose a team like the Ducks, who have really good players right now, but let's be honest, their window's like three ish years. Yeah. You ride it for three years, you have a little fun, Avalanche are good again in two, three years. You just drop that bandwagon team because, hey, I don't need it anymore. Carolina, you start to buy into it. Their young players start coming into their own. They start getting good at the same time the Avalanche do. Now, all of a sudden, you're like, I've been putting a lot of heart and energy into these Carolina team. Am I just going to drop them now? Or are you going to have two teams that all of a sudden start evening out a little bit? I think the Ducks are a solid choice because you know they have a window. You know they're going to be terrible in three years. Yeah. Perry and Getzlav, both 32. That's not not a recipe yeah. for long-term success. I I think you got to consider this. In the, like, you get off, and guess what? The, and you have the greatest reason. You're just like, oh, they still haven't bought out Kessler. <laughs> they still haven't bought him out. I need to get rid of him. Yeah, there's that boat anchor, Ryan Kessler. Yeah. So I, that's, that's you, you got to be careful with these things. I, I appreciate the thought. I will. This decision's getting harder than I thought it was. We'll see if Columbus can make it even harder next week. Did, so I haven't actually listened to the Ducks interview yet, but did they talk about how they are doing like, like? black magic to get this team in a decent cap position like because that's got to appeal to you as like a fancy stats and analytics type numbers like they're doing like i don't get how this team is under the cap yeah i don't get it either we did we did not talk about that um but it is very helpful because there's and like they they're not even that close like they're what four million five million away yeah so they're going to come into problems, though, when uh, they got to pay Gibson. That's Which is see, two years out. And so you jump off the bandwagon. See, yeah. like, this is... And this, even, this even is if they do, thing. you've got two more years of Gibson. There's going to be money coming up. They're, they're not going to be paying Andrew Cogliano $3 million anymore. Whatever, it's fine. I'm not worried about it. Exactly. That's Kevin why... BX is $4 million they're paying him right now. We'll go right into John Gibson's pocket. There. That's what, that's how you pay John Gibson. Done. Okay. No, so, not dude, worried. Sounds like we've got ourselves a, we got a showdown. Showdown. So this is, so what? I, I'm thinking it's like, yeah, like a, what, 40% chance you're going to be a Carolina fan. Well, like, 40, is it like neck and neck between Carolina and Anaheim right now? Yeah, I'd say like, it's, yeah, I'd say it's neck and neck. 40, 40, 20? Yeah, sure. Does that math work out? Yeah, that sounds good. That's 100%. So, it might even be more like 45, 45, 10. Well, you give no faith to the Jackets, do you? To your, like, I, I don't want to, like, put any pressure on you, but, like, and I think all the listeners know this, that our... Our show and our respect for you, <laughs> it suffers if you choose to cheer for Tortorella. Like, it suffers. I I don't know how we're going to move through that. Well, I'm sure we will, but it's going to be difficult. Okay. 
Well, I, I know I know you're a forgiving fella. And if I put you in that situation, if I force your hand, I I have faith. I'm I'm a l I'm a little worried about our relationship and what will happen if that takes place. Okay. Well uh, if anyone wishes to replace Joel if I pick the blue jackets, uh maybe just send us a letter. Don't send us an email, send us a letter. <laughs> I actually think this is so um, we haven't done a giveaway for a while, and so this is now, I have an idea. Okay, yeah. With high sticking done, it's obviously we haven't been doing any game-winning goals. Let's do this. Yeah. So, this is going to be purely subjective. So Those, are, those are always the best. Yeah, uh, send us an email, because uh, I'm not... Unless you, unless Carl wants to put his address out there. Well, and I don't. I I move in like two weeks. It would get lost in the mail. So so let's just do email. Mail at the fourth line. Mail. I don't know whatever. Yeah. yeah. Mail 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 at the fourth line podcast dot com. So or you, you could you could send it on the twitters on the DMs. Well, no, it's gonna pro- it's gonna have to be an email because I want them to. I want a good explanation of why they think they would be better than me on the show (laughs) okay i want them to like so if we were because this might happen next week we may have to find a replacement for me right and so if that's the case let's who so you why you at least want to say in who's replacing you yeah why do you think you would be good to replace me on the show okay and, and whoever we decide is the best at least gets a prize. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We got we got some mini sticks left. Uh, we're working on some new swag. Yeah, new stuff coming for this season. So get ready. Because we've done mini sticks for two years, and you know what? You know what? We need something else. So we got we got some ideas. There's we've should I t- I'll talk about some of the some of, we've, we've talked about t-shirts. We've talked about hats. We've talked about, you know, I, I'm a big lanyard fan because I like I grew up in the '90s, so we all have those. Yep. But those are some of the ones we're talking about. But the one, the one that's the leader in the clubhouse, I don't want to say because I, I want it to be a surprise. Okay, I like that. Yeah. So those things Joel mentioned, probably not going to be those, but we have done the it t-shirts in the past. We've done the t-shirts in the past, and those we might do those as a one-off thing. Um, as well. So if you if you want your hands on a fourth line T-shirt or a lanyard or a hat, hats are hats are weird. They're way more expensive than I thought they were. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like that's the one thing that everyone's like, we want hats, and I would love to do hats, but man, they're expensive. Yeah. Cool. But we, what we do have coming, I'm excited about. I want one. I'm pretty. Will will we will we be able to have one ourselves? Yeah, I have a mini stick. I do too. Well, sort of. I don't know where it is right now. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, so let okay, us know that well, at at the mail, and if you want to send it to us on Twitter, at Fourth Line Podcast, and our Facebook, you could Facebook message us too. We got a lengthy Facebook message from a Ducks fan this week. Um, what was his name? I'll pull it up here. Um, I'll, lengthy yeah. description. Um. Thank you for sending that out. My messenger app does not want to work. Um, so well, sorry, sorry I forget I'll, your name. You fix it. I'll talk about how. So when you when you send this email in, you tell us tell us, hey, this is why I would be. You could either say why you'd be better than me, or why you'd be a good replacement. Um, or if you just want me gone, you can tell us why that. That's fine too. <laughs> like I. I'm fine with any of these things. Okay. Uh, just so that because apparently, if Carl chooses Tortorella, I'm gone. That's apparently well. And your your lowest number was ten percent. So there's a ten percent chance that next week is Joel's last show. So here's the thing: when we were talking about bribes or things that affect, what does that knowing that I would be gone does that sway your decision at all? Yeah, I would say or, that bumps up the jackets odds to like fifteen, twenty percent. Well, it, 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 <laughs> well, it goes in the opposite direction. Wow, I know how we all feel about each other around here. Well, that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Do you choose your thing. 
Um, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna. If if you're looking for me this week, I uh, I've started a new um, initiative called the Fourth Line Podcast. Um, not the number four. You spell it out, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you can find me at the Fourth Line Podcast dot com. Uh, not the number four. <laughs> okay, just, just written out. Just write that out. Yeah. Okay. Um. No, I I don't think that you leaving would impact it w- it would impact my decision certainly i don't know that might be a deal breaker for me like you might have just thrown the ultimate cog in the wheel i don't know we'll have to see what happens next week well, well i well yeah we'll see what happens i'm not sure i just i'm i'm not sure how i feel about it like it's shaking my belief system in you in sports in gary batman like this is what? I don't. I don't know anyone that has openly chosen, chosen, chosen. I don't know. It's early. How to to cheer for Tortorella? Like no one's done that on. Like no one's like I choose them because of Tortorella. Oh, that's not why I'm choosing them. Do not. Well, do not mistake this for that. Oh no, I am mistaking that. <laughs> oh, I am. I, okay, that's... you're blatantly just ignoring what I say. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, that's okay. Well. I'm I'm excited about this. I'm looking forward to looking forward to some. I think we need some resolution on the bandwagon. Yeah, and we're gonna get some. Don't you worry. What is also happening, Christian? That was the guy with the message. So shout out to Christian. Thank you very much. Essentially, his point was the Ducks are good. They're gonna win. You should pick the Ducks. Yeah, but he, it gave, was... he gave much more detail, and it, it was you know certainly that was kind of what got you know helped get the reminders of the Ducks being good. All right. Um, question. I stumbled upon this about a week ago on uh, this website you may know called the Reddit. Have you have you been on the Reddit? I have an Adele subreddit that I. <laughs> you run the Adele subreddit. I like that. Yeah. So. <laughs> so yeah, familiar. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, well, <laughs> while we talk about this, I'll I'll. I'll pose the question, and then I'm going to go read your subreddit on Adele. Um, but what it came, I'll give credit where credit's due. Um, I, <laughs> I'll try to, at least. Username is Amgartish, A-M-G-A-R-T-S-H. Anyways, he had a lengthy post about sophomore slumps. Right. And looking into um, the sophomore slump. Do you believe in the sophomore slump? I believe in it for some, but not others. Okay. Like I think, and when I say that, uh, it just that it really actually means no, because like any season, anyone can outperform what their talent says they should do. So, are there rookies who outperform who they like what their talent is? I would say yes. Then, then like if that, but that's not really a sophomore slump. Like you look at like like McDavid clearly didn't have a sophomore slump. Nope. And so I think if you are talented, then you are not gonna have sophomore slumps. Like, like so I, like you look at like so Line A, Matthews. Like, do you think they're all of a sudden gonna not be good? No. Like I, so I think talent plays out. Does it? Did teams adjust to you? Probably a little bit, but not that much. Like it's a long season. If teams aren't adjusting to you mid-season, then you should probably get like better coaches, because that's the thing that you should pay attention to. Mm-hmm. But so, so I don't think so. But I'm sure, like, I don't know. Maybe yeah, I don't know. So what is so, what is, is there like stats that say that there is or something? I don't so know. there is some stats, and there's. What they did is he went all the way back to 06, 07 and looked at every rookie's goals or sorry, points per game in their rookie season and then how many more or less points they scored the following season on a point per game basis. So what it shows is that there's not a ton of correlation. However, if you were to look at it, quite literally what you said, your eye test, Joel, for those who are big eye test fans, Joel essentially gave us that. Your eye test matches with the fancy numbers. 
right. is, is that the players who put up a higher point per game total in their rookie season have a greater chance of improving that number the following season. So not only would your take and these numbers say that they would have a better chance, you know, line A Matthews to reproduce, not reproduce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they probably have a chance to reproduce. I don't know. Haven't asked them that question. Um, uh, that they have a chance to produce their numbers again. Uh, they actually have a chance to improve their numbers. So if you look at the guys who are putting up the top number, so the, the top four guys for rookies, Paul Stastny, Connor McDavid, Genny Malkin, Artemi Panarin. Three of the four of those increased their point per game by more than 0.1. So that's eight points over an 82-game season. So looking at those numbers, you can expect a 10% increase approximately for Line A and Matthews next year. The lower end guys, so he, he took ones that were more or less than, or more than half a point per game. So those are 40-point seasons. A rookie who puts up a 40-point season, a lot of teams are going to get quite excited about that. On average, they dropped. And again, there's such a scatter in this that it it's almost irrelevant. Like, there's guys who are very good. Um, there's, you know, Tyler Johnson, Jordan Eberle, Steven Stamkos, Jamie Benn. Those are the guys on, like, the top of they had a bad rookie year and a quality second year. And then you've got guys at the end like Tyler Bozak, Derek Broussard, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who fell off the table. So I think that's what we're looking at of, is the sophomore slump a thing? It is if you're not actually good. Yeah. And yeah. That makes like, that's not surprising. Um, it's just, and that's what it like. That's what I was saying. Like talent, talent wins out. So I, I'm having a hard time following this conversation anymore because it's, <laughs> it's just all over. Or did I did I accidentally make a pun, or were you still trying to forget the thought of Austin Matthews and Patrick Line with reproduction? <laughs> uh, I just really want my Austin Matthews to score lots of goals next year. <laughs> okay, that's all you care about. That's fair. That's allowed. Because like. I, we had I, I don't know what I don't know what Nylander's point total was, but uh, two two of our rookies had sixty point plus seasons at least. I yeah, don't know that's good. So I think, and this is something I think we've talked about. Like, so like Connor Brown went and scored twenty goals last year. I'm gonna go with he's gonna be on that regressive sophomore slump side of the picture i don't think he's gonna do what he did last year yeah, but definitely i think might, the, I... the bigger question here is joel um you know last year or last month um some pretty big news came out and i just wanted your thoughts um from at the beginning of july when adele had to cancel the last two shows that she had scheduled at wembley like how did you are you okay with that? Did you? I know, like, she was a little upset with her vocal coach that she had to do that. Thoughts? Yeah, it's it's difficult when I just care so much about her own well being, and so even though it she may have wanted to do it and it was difficult, like this might be best for her to take like to long take some long breaks. term. Yeah, long term, just it's going to be good for her to take some breaks um but i i'm still i send her messages to come to vancouver all the time no replies no i haven't yet even though even though i'm like like when you're like the creator like the top admin of that subreddit you think you'd get some love back yeah you're not though i don't know no love for joel from miss adele yeah it feels Feels like I'm calling out from the outside, and no one's letting me in. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So, just asking, uh, hello, Adele. So, so this is um, uh, I'm in a giving mood today. Okay. Wow. All right. So we're we're gonna have this one. 
we're this this contest may we'll maybe stretch this over a couple of weeks or so, but uh we'll give out another mini stick to those who want to submit wit what subreddit do you think Carl or I or both are most likely <laughs> to be running? I like that. Which like as you listen to it, like which what's what's most likely for us to be running? Like is so I you can't say Adele because I already do that. We already yeah, that's know. That's so, real. Like, Joel is so, Joel's username is clearly either uh Damaladeus Minion or Tom the F and Kid. That's that's one of those is Joel. You can figure out which one. So so if if I wasn't running the Adele one, which one would I be? And what what about Carl? Where 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 would he be spending all of his days? Yeah, just, just helping helping people to get the information they need. Yeah, I so because we got new swag coming in, we got to get rid of our old swag. So got to clear it out. Yeah, I don't. I've only got one shelf for this kind of stuff, and so I got to clear this out. So, so how do you do? You like that? Yeah, I do. Uh, if you want to do that, you can tweet us. That one will fit into a tweet. You can also yeah. email it. Uh, our Twitter at Fourth Line Podcast with the number four. Facebook.com slash the Fourth Line Podcast. Mail at the Fourth Line Podcast.com. Our Patreon, Joel, we put out a our barbecue article this week was about what we cooked in the past week. Yeah, it was good. We had we had uh, quite the week of eats. So head over there if you are interested in that. Thank you very much to everyone who supports us on Patreon. Uh, very great discussion in the Patreon. Uh, group chat this week as well uh, helping Phil Nate's road trip playlist with our favorite episodes of the show Yeah. so thanks to Nate and all the guys over there, Nate, Alex, Mike uh, everyone who supports us on Patreon uh, patreon.com slash fourthlinepodcast and the fourthlinepodcast.com Mike uh, Laborn had an article about uh, about picking bandwagon teams this week as well as uh, the Detroit Red Wings defense. So head over there, check those out. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us on Last Word on Sports, Nuts and Bolts Sports. Thank you very much. Joel. Boom City.